So you want a new TV, but as soon as you start looking, you're hit with a wall of nonsense. QLZD, OLED, Mini LID, Neo QLI. What does any of it mean? You're not alone. Every year, TV tech gets more confusing, and that's by design. Manufacturers throw around fancy terms to make their TVs sound more impressive, but you're left wondering what's real and what's marketing fluff. In this video, I'm going to cut through the noise. I'll explain the real differences between TV types, what matters, what doesn't, and how to get the most bang for your buck. By the end, you'll know exactly which TV you should buy in 2025 and which ones to skip. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated on our latest content. All right, let's get something straight. Despite all the buzzwords flying around, there are really only two types of TV displays you can buy right now, LCD and OLED. That's it. Two, everything else, just different versions or enhancements of those two core technologies. Let's break them down. First, LCD TVs, which you'll often see labeled as LED TVs. These work by shining a backlight through a liquid crystal layer to produce an image. That backlight is usually made up of LEDs, hence the name, and it's responsible for how bright the picture gets. But here's the thing. Because it uses a backlight behind the screen, black levels aren't always truly black, it's more like a really dark gray. Now, OLED TVs, on the other hand, are a completely different animal. They don't use a backlight at all. Instead, each pixel lights up on its own or turns off completely. That gives you perfect blacks, crazy contrast, and a super thin design. Now within these two categories, LCD and OLED, you'll find all kinds of variations. Edge lit, full array, QLED, mini LED, QD OLED, and four stack OLED. Yeah, it can get confusing again, but don't worry, we're going to break down each one explain what it really means, and tell you which ones are actually worth your money. Let's start with LCD-based TVs. If you've ever walked through a big box store and seen a sea of TVs all blaring the same image, odds are most of them were LCDs. They dominate the market, especially in the more budget-friendly price ranges, but not all LCD TVs are built the same. Here's what you need to know, edge-lit LEDs. These were once popular because they allowed TVs to be ultra-thin. The LEDs sit along the edges, usually just the bottom or sides, and try to light up the whole screen. The result? Uneven brightness, weak contrast, and washed out dark scenes. If you see edge lit on the spec sheet, I'd say keep walking. Direct lit LEDs. Now we're stepping it up. In these TVs, the LED backlights are placed directly behind the screen in a grid pattern. That gives you better brightness across the screen, more even lighting and fewer hotspots. Direct lit TVs are a solid budget choice. They're not going to blow you away, but they'll get the job done if you're looking for something basic and reliable. Full array local dimming. This is where LCD TVs start to shine. Full array local dimming means the LEDs behind the screen are broken into zones that can be individually brightened or dimmed. So if there's a bright moon in a dark sky, the zone behind the moon lights up while the rest stays dark. It's way more accurate and creates deeper blacks and stronger contrast. If your budget allows it, this is the minimum level I'd recommend for people who care about getting a great picture. QLED or quantum dot. Now we're adding some color science into the mix. Quantum dots are tiny particles that help TVs produce richer colors and higher brightness, especially helpful for HDR content. Different brands market this in different ways. Samsung, QLED, or Neo QLED. Whatever the name, if it mentions quantum dots, that's a very good thing. It's like giving your TV a color and brightness upgrade. Mini LED, Mini LED is the peak of LCD tech right now. Instead of regular sized LEDs, Mini LED TVs use much smaller ones. That means manufacturers can pack in more lights, more zones, and give you even more precise control over brightness and contrast. Think of it as full array local dimming on steroids with quantum dots thrown in for vivid color. Mini LED TVs can rival OLEDs in brightness and they're getting super affordable. Brands like Hisense and TCL have amazing mini LED models that don't break the bank. Now let's move over to OLED TVs. This is where picture quality really takes off. Remember earlier when I said OLED pixels light up individually? That means when a pixel turns off, it's not dim, it's pure black. And that makes a massive difference in picture quality, especially in dark scenes or cinematic content. OLED TVs have perfect black levels, no blooming or haloing, incredible contrast, and fantastic viewing angles. They're also thinner than almost any other screen you'll see, but for years, OLEDs had one big weakness. They didn't get as bright as LCDs. That's been changing fast, and now some OLEDs are brighter and more colorful than ever before. Let's look at the main types, and WOLED or white OLED. 
This is the most common form of OLED, and it's used in models like the LG C5, Sony Bravia 8, and some of Samsung's entry-level OLEDs. WOLED uses a white subpixel alongside red, green, and blue to boost brightness while maintaining great color. QD OLED or Quantum Dot OLED. Now we're getting fancy, QD OLED merges OLED's perfect blacks with the color-boosting power of Quantum Dots. That means brighter highlights, punchier colors, and an overall more cinematic experience. Models like the Samsung S95C and Sony A95L use Quantum Dot OLED tech, and they've won just about every Best TV award in the book. They're pricier than WOLED, but if you want that wow factor, this is where you find it. Four Stack or Tandem OLED. This is the newest kid on the OLED block, also called Tandem OLED. This tech stacks four layers of organic material to push brightness and efficiency even further. You'll find this in top-tier models like the LG G5 and Panasonic Z95B. It's still rare, still expensive, but it's jaw-dropping. If QD OLED is a high-performance sports car, 4-stack OLED is a hypercar. Okay, so we've covered a lot. Let's simplify things. Here's a quick guide to help you match your needs with the right kind of TV. On a tight budget, go for a direct-lit LED TV. It'll give you decent brightness and reliability without draining your wallet. Great for casual viewing. Just avoid edge-lit TVs. They're cheap for a reason, and that reason is poor picture quality. Want to step up without breaking the bank? Look for full array local dimming. It's the sweet spot for people who want solid picture quality, good contrast, and don't want to spend OLED money. These TVs are getting more affordable every year. Better yet, find a model that also includes quantum dots, QLED or Neo QLED. You'll get brighter colors and a much better HDR experience for just a little more. Ready to go all in on picture quality, but still want a deal? Mini LED TVs are where it's at. They offer OLED like contrast and brightness, especially when paired with quantum dots. Models like the TCL QM7 or Hisense U7 give you incredible performance at prices that still feel reasonable, often under $1,000 for a 65 inch set. Is picture quality everything? Then you're looking for an OLED TV. Start with a WOLED like the LG C5 or Sony Bravia 8. You'll get perfect blacks, amazing contrast, and colors that pop. These are fantastic for movie lovers, gamers, and anyone who wants the best home theater experience. Want the best of the best? Then it's QD OLED or 4-stack OLED time. These TVs are the top of the mountain right now. Think insane brightness, ultra-accurate color, and unmatched contrast, all in one sleek package. If you want something that'll truly blow you away every time you turn it on, look at the Samsung S95 series, Sony A95L LG G5, or the Panasonic Z95B. You'll pay a premium, but it's worth it if you want a next-level experience. Choosing a TV doesn't have to be stressful. Now you know what each display type really offers, which ones are worth your money, and how to avoid getting stuck with outdated tech. If this helped you out, help someone else by sharing the video. Hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows it's worth spreading. And if you want more no-nonsense breakdowns like this, go ahead and subscribe, because there's always more tech to explore. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay savvy.